33. Uh, please stand. We pledge. We pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We welcome everybody that's here and those in Zoom land. Um, my remarks only is that I wish Chris Parker the very best. And I'd like, <laughs> like to wish a thank you to those who have, have um, indicated an interest in joining us to fill Chris's position on the board and um, invite anybody else who's interested to submit your interest by Wednesday, the um, 14th of July. That is Wednesday, isn't it? Yes, yes, Madam Chair, and we'll put a notice to that effect on the website. Great, thank you. Okay, open public comments for items not on the agenda. Please limit them to three minutes. Yes. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, could we do additions to the agenda? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, additions to the agenda. Do I, so um, I would like to suggest if the board is so inclined to add to the approval of the minutes at regular meeting June 15, 2021. Okay. To the treasurer's report, we'd like to add a deposit for the air conditioning repair. Okay. Under new business, we'd like to add a number two that is approval of expenditure to repair the well at the recreation facility. Right. And the last item to be added is action from executive session if that's necessary after the executive session. Okay. So is there's there four items four to be added. Items. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. Okay. Aye. Okay. All those in favor, Jean? Aye. Jeff? Aye. I'm an aye, and I just won't be here. Yes. Actually, and Michael won't be here. He, he won't be here. All oh, that's it. Okay. All right. Um, now, do we have any public comments? Oh. Well, I guess Maddie Arms, would you come forward, please? I have been pressured, I feel, um, through the meetings to present the town of Vernon's opinion on the spent nuclear fuel. I am looking to you guys for some guidance. I've written what I believe to be reasonable, but um, I think at some point in the future, perhaps the town meeting, um, there ought to be uh, some sort of a query to the rest of the town, maybe a non-binding um, referendum, where you would get more of a flavor for what people were thinking. Uh, but in the interim, you know, I'd like to put some of this to rest um, with, you know, some reasonable suggestions. So. As I said, I'm looking to you for some guidance. And I think you read what I think might be appropriate, but I don't want to put words in your mouth. I want to hear what you have to say. I'm sorry, it's just excellent. Okay. I feel like it's a reflection of how the town feels for the most part. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. It's very well written. Um, and she starts out. She's going to point it towards the 
Mm -hmm. it was education, and you know, I think perhaps some of the members of that board are lacking. And so you provided basic background. Um, can you <clears throat> explain a little bit about uh, as far as pressure from other board members? pressure for Vernon to take one side or another? Or? I believe that, you know, um, the impetus behind this is they want Vernon to make a statement um, that concurs with their own feelings. Um, we've lived with the fuel for a long time. I think we all recognize that it's safely managed. Um, we have confidence that it will continue to be safely managed, but um, initially uh, NDCAP had a memorandum uh, of support that said uh, they would support consolidated interim storage. And it was, it was the sort of acceptance of this that they've taken issue with, that it wasn't the full panel of NDCAP didn't vote on it, um, and they wanted to get everybody's opinion. Um, Yucca Mountain was supposed to be the repository. Uh, that has been delayed and basically has fallen out of favor. So they've come up with a couple of con uh, consolidated interim storage facilities, one in Texas, and one in New Mexico. Um, there's been a lot of pushback from those states. Uh, New Mexico doesn't even have a nuclear power plant, so you can understand their feelings. Um, but I think that we have to do things that are prudent. Um, and you know, as I said in my my memo, um, in times where there is crisis and there is, you know, uh, welfare of the public good, that decisions are made that aren't popular, but... Um, so, anyhow, um, I, I think what I should do is read this, okay, and then everybody will hear it, people in the room and also people in the meeting, and then you know, I will take, you know, your opinions. Okay. So, the federal government has not performed its own mandate to assume ownership and storage of spent nuclear fuel. Thus, the current licensee, North Star, will monitor, maintain the IFACI pad until the federal government cites a repository or repositories. The town of Vernon acknowledges the responsibility and risk of housing the fuel until an approved repository repositories is selected and the fuel can be transported off-site. The town of Vernon supports a repository site or sites under the following conditions. One, approval by the federal government, DOE, Congress, and the NRC. Two, Sites deemed tested safe by engineering and environmental experts by known standards. Three, received approval consent from the state, territory, town, or country chosen to be the repository repositories. This includes one single repository, multiple repositories, or interim storage. The town of Vernon is also not provisioned or configured to host meetings of the Federal Nuclear Spent Fuel Committee for the foreseeable future. Now why the last sentence? Because they asked if Vernon could host a, a meeting of the Federal Spent Nuclear Fuel Committee. Um, it, it tends to be very large and I think that it would really stretch our resources. Yeah, you have several. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, I think that's pretty obvious. <laughs> yeah. Jeff? No, I, <clears throat> I agree with what you have, Maddie. I think it's 
fair to say that um, given the choice, we prefer not to have spent fuel in our town. There's absolutely no, uh, it's, it's out of our, out of our hands, and so we make the best of it. And uh, I don't, I don't believe in being an activist and trying to uh, uh, get rid of it any sooner than it's safe to, to go somewhere else. I I do think we need to advocate for. You know, if we're going to be a host site for nuclear waste, I do think we need to advocate for compensation. Well, that is in the works in many states. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, well then, thank you very much. I really appreciate your time. This has been a great help. And I will send all of you the contact information if you want to listen in to the meeting on the 19th. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your meeting is on the 20th. Okay, so it's going to be after. Yeah. yeah okay. I was going to say otherwise. It's 1 o'clock in the afternoon, oh, too. Okay. It's, a, it's a very different time. It usually lasts about an hour. Oh, okay. Okay, well then, yep. I feel. Thanks for coming in, man. Oh, yeah, thank, thank, thank you for, for having me. Yeah. Appreciate it. Appreciate your work. Okay, approval minutes. <laughs> Regular meeting. Regular meeting, June fifteenth, twenty twenty one. Can we do them all at once or one by one? Um. Well, there's two I have to abstain on, but other than that. Oh, okay. Well, I think we can say which ones. Okay. I, I need to abstain on the 29th on July 2nd, so we so can't take action on those. Because we don't have to. We don't. Oh, we have to have three positives. So, you can take the first three all together. June 15th, June 11th, and June 24th. I move that we accept the uh, meeting minutes of regular meeting June 15th, special meeting June 11th, special meeting June 24th, as written. Second. Okay. Jim? Aye. Jeff? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Treasury report. Warrants. Okay. Madam Chair, I move that we. Approve payment of the following warrant, 25T, accounts payable, $19,230.16, and that's uh, FY 2021 final warrant. 1T, accounts payable, $121,836.93. 24S, payroll, $9,019.77. 25S payroll, $8,328.88. And 26S payroll, $16,414.17. Second. Okay, do you want to explain why um, the large one here is Cindy? She's got a lot of background. She's about to speak, so then I will. Okay. okay. I, I don't. don't. Okay. Okay, just curious. No, I don't think there was any, mm -hmm. anything really okay. um, significant. Probably some contracts. And, and the treasurer's on the line, so you can ask her if you would. Okay. Cindy? Yes? Can you explain why the accounts payable was so large? The oh, yes. I had to pay some of the new, um, the annual um, memberships. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Like the, I know it was like the LCT. Mm -hmm. Thank you. What's a year thing? All those in favor, signify by saying aye, please. Aye. Jane? Aye. Jeff? Aye. And myself. <laughs> okay. I just throw it all out there. Yeah. Okay. We have a balance sheet of all the funds. Cindy, do you want to go over this with us, the balance sheet? Sure. It just tells um, the savings is as of June 30th. The investments are as of March 31st. And it just shows you what's in what's in each fund at this point. 
Um, I should be getting um, the investments for the end of June from Gordon Christensen by within the next couple weeks. Great. Madam Chair. Yes. I just, could I add a couple of comments? Yes, um, I ask that uh, the treasurer produce this because I think it's important that the board and the residents are able to see all of the fund balances on one page. Um, you can certainly see it in the annual report if you um, look at each of the funds. Um, most of these funds are restricted, so it's not money that you can you know, do other all things with. All of the funds with. are restricted to th their specific area. You can't move, use them for other reasons. No, I understand, but some are restricted more than others. Like some are restricted, like the cemetery funds are restricted more. Um, town meeting would have authority on other funds. Not unless, yes, if it's voted for by the town residents. Right, right, like the capital reserve fund and, um, and like, for example, it's interesting to see relationships. Like there's a solid waste fund that has 55000 um, in it, and then there's the pay-as-you-throw fund, which is negative 29000 um, That's something that town meeting might want to look at in the future is the relationship between well, those funds. Bear in funds. mind that I have not got the bills for June for the solid waste fund. So that's not the final. I have not gotten all the bills in yet. Sure. Oh, sure. And, and this is just a start. And it also, it's important to note that it does not include the general fund. Um, so the general fund fund balance is not included in this. So this isn't meant to be something that you would take action on. It's just for uh, conversation and just informational purposes. Um, I just think it's interesting to look at community finances in different ways and it, this is just a different lens um, so that you can see all of the the funds that that exist so the Grange fund has that been utilized for scholarships at all lately no it has not for the last f few years hmm. right and then the other scholarship fund is running out of funding that's right because they no longer ask for funding at, at town meeting. They stopped doing that a couple of years ago. They used to have an article asking right. if people wanted to raise and appropriate funding for that. And a couple of years ago, they stopped doing that. Right, and another clerk has it. some um, ideas about how to start raising money um, for that scholarship fund. Um, so that's, it was just for it's you to exciting. see. Mm -hmm. That's exciting. Thank you very much. And thank you for putting it together, Cindy. Yeah. You're welcome. Okay, storage area relocation. Cindy, you're up. Well, I sent you all a letter. Yep. I'm assuming you all read it, Sorry. Yes. Um, number one, um, I was taken by surprise at the last meeting when it was suggested. I had no idea that you were even thinking of doing this, and um, it was a bombshell because when we hired our first town administrator, they talked about doing that and realize that I need to have records at my fingertips when people need stuff and decided they would leave that as my and the list of storage area. Mary Lynn also has records in there for delinquent taxes. So when it was brought up at the last meeting, I was taken by surprise. Also, um, the area that you're talking about moving them into, which is now town administrator's office, formerly the town clerk office, um, is smaller by, um, than the room they're in now. So I do not think they will all fit in there. We would have to take into account that they have the place where all the, everything's plugged in that cannot be um, covered. It cannot, you can't put stuff up against it. It has to be open so they can get to it. So that takes away some area. Um, it's not as secure as where it is now. Now it's locked up. Um, the other way it would, they would be able to access it, not through the hall office, but through Tim's office, because they keep that open so Recording they can get in progress. circulating. Um, so that having been said, I, in, not, in, in good faith, cannot even think about getting to this project. It's going to be very time consuming until after the first installment of uh, taxes because uh, right now I'm doing fiscal year closing which has a number of duties to it that takes that are time consuming 
the auditors are now asking me for information so they can start the FY2021 audit. I have tax bills that will need to go out the first week of August and I have tax payment due on, in September. So I cannot feasibly see how I can get to it before, before that time period. Um, if I realize that it's urgent for you because you don't want the new town clerk or town administrator to start in one office and have to be moved to another office. However, I just, I, I don't see how my office can get to it before then. Okay. And Kevin, Kevin has a couple of things to add. Okay, Kevin. When you guys were researching that, um, did you proceed with who researched this? Can't hear you. We can't, we can't hear you. They can't hear you. Who researched the move? Who, who researched this move? Cindy, um, Cindy, can you start over again? Because we can't hear you. Okay, can you hear me now? I can hear you, but we can't hear Cindy. Okay, who did the research on this move as far as storage capacity went? I do not know. I know it's been discussed sometimes in the past. It was discussed okay. with Michelle. And when, when was the last time anybody was in the um, storage area off the treasurer's office? Well, that, that area has been closed off to the public for quite some time, so. Right, but when you were, when you initially planned this, did anybody go up into that office and look around and see what was in there? I haven't been in there for quite a while, have you? Okay. I remember because, meeting with somebody in there a few years ago. Yeah, if you go in there now, what you're gonna lose is, if I figured it up right, what you're going to be losing is about 10 feet of 10 square feet of storage in that town administrator office that is not including the um um that has all the wires and everything else which you cannot put anything in front of if you go into this storage area you're going to find that those large metal cabinets you're only you're only looking at, let's see, um, when you look at the width of the town administrator's current office, you're only looking at a width of about 122.5 inches. Um, yeah, I did it in inches, which turns out to be, let's see, I believe about 16 feet. Now, when you take into account those big file cabinets, the ones, um, the ones, not a regular file cabinet, but those big wide ones that have the drawers that pull out, you're looking at probably a good three and a half feet when you pull those things out. You're gonna have those on each side of the walls on the Governor Hunt, the 142 side. Then you're also gonna have file cabinets and storage stuff on the Barrows Road side but then you're going to have minimal because you have the door to the hallway. You're going to have minimal storage on the 142 side, north of the hallway door that they leave open. And then the, then the north wall, there's very little storage area. And you've got a bunch of those large file cabinets. You've got a fireproof file cabinet. And you've got other smaller file cabinets, not including banker boxes, full of um, paperwork and all this other good stuff because when I was the um, maintenance foreman, I think it was three or four times I had to go in there and try to straighten stuff up to make more room. Unless there's, unless somebody's been down into the vault and there's a ton of room down there, you're not going to have enough room or the treasurer's office is not going to have enough room along with the listers to um, to store all the stuff in there and get around easily without having to move stuff each time they need to open up one of those um, one of those um, cabinets, one of those file cabinets. Okay. Um, there's just, and I'm going off of what um, 
what I dealt with when I was there as the maintenance foreman. And you don't have enough room in that room to file all this stuff. How much of that, excuse me, can you excuse me, Cindy? Yeah. How much of that stuff has been gone through with the retention schedule from the, from the state? Oh, I can't hear you. Meeting. I'm more than happy to bring you in and show you. It's not okay. to the public. It's not that would be good. To any one of you. It's just kept off because there's personnel stuff in there that we don't want people getting into. But I, certainly, you guys have every right to go in and look at it. Okay, we'll, I, we will. We will be stopping in to see you individually. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you very thank you. much. Thank you. Okay. Now the American rest. Did anybody else have questions? Okay, the American Rescue Plan Act. Appointment of town authorized representative and town contact. Wendy, I'm going to turn it over to you. Sure, thank you. And we've been talking about this for a little, a few meetings now. Um, and Vermont municipalities are eligible for funding through this act. The deadline is July 15th for the town to accept the funding. The funding, uh, the amount for the first, um, uh, um, the first section, um, there are two tranches, uh, is $229,894 in two separate disbursements. That'll come through the state. And in order to be eligible for that and for potential additional disbursements, the town needs to respond by July 15th and accept the funding. So there are three motions that are necessary to accept the funding and to authorize the chair to sign the documents. Um, the proposal is that Sandy would be the authorized representative as the chair and that Cindy would be the contact person as the treasurer. And it's important that Cindy uh, and the chair coordinate well with the town administrator, both me for while I'm here and then the uh, with the new person because unlike other uh, funding opportunities this is not just a fill out a form get the money fill out another form after you've spent it um, there needs to be a process a public process to to determine how you want to spend the funding um, there's only certain things that you can spend the funding on and it's changing all the time <laughs> so this is some it's, it's going to be a project but it's a it's a good project um, it's an opportunity so the three motions um, are in the memo. Um, Cindy, did you want to add anything to this explanation? Um, I just that we're going to have to be very careful how, can you hear me? Yes. We're going to have to be very careful how we spend it, make sure we're spending it correctly, because mm -hmm. if we even accidentally spend it incorrectly, we have to pay it back. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of reporting in uh, every October you have to report you have to copies of everything documenting how the money was spent so this is going to be a, a very time consuming very uh, and long term thing that we're going to be doing would it be better to have the town administrators a contact person then do you think Cindy um, I don't Wendy felt it should be me since I'm the treasurer and I deal with the finances um, I've never I've never it's not the same as a regular grant where there's no grant writing involved, um, but it is time consuming as far as you have to have copies of everything, you have to have copies of how the money was spent, invoices, copies of canceled checks, and the reporting is every October until it's used up. And I, and I guess you have up until uh, 2026. Right, the, the funds have to be encumbered by 2024, by the end of the year, but then you have till 2026 to actually spend them. So you can contract for something, for example, in 2024. Um, but again, that's all subject to change because there's a, a, a proposed rule now 
um, that is, is being reviewed. And one of the things that uh, Vermont hopes will change is that the funding that's supposed to go to counties will go to municipalities, which could um, result in an amount triple of, of what you're proposing to get now. And I should also mention, um, I'm not sure if Vernon has received federal funding before, um, so the, the strings that are attached are, are uh, normal for other towns who have received funding. Um, but just in case there is something that you don't feel comfortable with, you can always give the money back. Um, but you can't get it unless you, you do respond by, by July 15th. But you can give it back if you're not comfortable with any of the conditions. And um, you can, uh, I'd be happy to send it to the town attorney so that he can give you his analysis of the conditions if you'd like. Or that could be a subject of a future meeting. You mm -hmm. can take your time and read the conditions. And That's all of us. Yeah. But we're going to need to make a decision before the 15th. Yeah. Right. You need to make a decision tonight unless you want to have a special meeting. So I mean I'm I'm ready to move forward at least to express an interest before the fifteenth. Okay. Motions then? Yeah. I I move that the town of Vernon accept its allocation of coronavirus local fiscal recovery funding C L F R F from the US Treasury along with the award terms and conditions and assurances of compliance with civil rights requirement that are requirements of accepting these funds. There's second. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Jane. Aye. Jeff. Aye. Sandy. <laughs> okay, that motion carried. All right. Uh, we move that we appoint Sandra Harris as the chair of the select board serve as the town's authorized representative as required by the coronavirus local fiscal recovery funding from the U.S. Treasury to sign the award terms and conditions and assurances of compliance with the civil rights requirements. Second. Mm -hmm. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Jeff? Aye. Jean? Aye. Sandy? Aye. Okay. I move that we name Cindy Turnley as the town treasurer to be the contact person for the town's CLRFR award from the U.S. Treasury. Second. Those in favor? Jean? Aye. Jeff? Aye. Sandy? Aye. Okay. And I'll be in tomorrow to sign those papers. Great. And Tim is still on the call, so that is good. Okay. Thank you. Town administrator. I'm sorry, there's one more item oh, that we added, I'm the um, air conditioning deposit. Right, the deposit for the air conditioning program. Right, and the amount is $4,259.41 that the um, contractor, King's Electric, is requiring that the town pay prior to ordering the um, uh, mini splits. They're requiring half of it. But the 4000 is what? is half of the total. The total is four thousand. No, the total is nine thousand. That's something. the deposit total. The deposit. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I misread it. Yeah. I wish you were right, but yeah, no. yeah me too. Yeah. <laughs> well, we need to get that fixed. So, is there a motion to that effect? I move that we authorize payment to Kings Electric or the. Um, 50% deposit for the air conditioning in the town office building in the amount of $4,259.41. Is there a second? Second. Any more discussion? Well, I think it's a little unusual to, when doing business with a municipality, to demand a deposit prior to even ordering equipment. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm a little disappointed. Um, we, we assumed that this would have been taken care of a while back, and yet now, um, now we find that <clears throat> the order hasn't been placed, and mm -hmm. we have to come up with half the money. And I, I don't quite feel that's right. 
right way to do business for the town. Yeah, but we got to do what we got to do because mm -hmm. we don't need another hospital. No, not uh, the I'm sure it was unbearable mm -hmm. last week in here. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor, Jeff? Aye. Jim? Aye. Same. Aye. Okay. Yes. Madam Chair, I'm looking for my notes. Um, so I wanted to update you. Let me see if I have them. If not, I will just wing it. Um, Are you upset with me before I go? Yes. Thank you. Um, all right. This will be a memory test. Um, <laughs> I want, I'd like to update you on Town Hall, on the phone system, on the website, I'm sorry, on the, um, uh, air conditioning system, which you have most of the information, and on the um, opening under COVID. So telephone system. Um, we had a good meeting last week um, with Bill Vermouth so that he could speak with the consolidated folks about the integration of the IT system with the telephone system. Um, and so that we could talk to the consolidated folks about adding a line for this room because I, I missed that on the on the first go around um, adding a line for this room uh, would result in 11 phone numbers or seats as they call them which would require a larger port that would be, need to be um, when, once you get to 10 you need to go to the next step of a port but um, the bright side is that the IT system could use that port um, so we'd have savings on the IT side. It, that change plus adding two copper lines for the police and the alarm, which might not be necessary, we're still checking that out, those would increase the price um, just under $100 a month. So then we're getting into what you're paying now. Um, obviously better service. Recording in progress. Um, but. The, all of this is in flux. Um, so Bill is continuing his review. He'll be speaking with departments um, to make sure that that what the IT system is you know can do under these conditions um, works with the phone um, because both are going to be using the uh, um, consolidated uh, network basically. So all in all, it's it's going to be a much better system. And and Bill is. Um, he, he has some really good suggestions, but they're not complete yet. So just wanted to give you a heads up. So there will be additional paperwork that, that needs to be signed. So please be on the lookout for that. Um, we do need to determine which phone numbers to keep because right now we have many more numbers than we need. Um, we'll keep the ones that are advertised. Um, we have a 4949 number that you have for the fax, which is a great number. Sure, but, um, but, but we should not give it up. And any numbers that are easy to remember, we, we should not give up. Um, and if there are any other numbers that are meaningful for the town, you know, um, let just you know let let me know. Um, there, so the but there's no there's no cost extra cost to keeping an old number. Oh no. Available. No. Just in case. Well, you know, yeah, yes. If if there's an extra number, there is a cost because because the old numbers correlate to lines. Mm -hmm. And if we don't and, need a line. Right. So, so, so we'll get rid of all the numbers that we don't need, yeah. but we can choose which of the actual which numbers we want to keep. We'll put, them, put a certain number on a certain line. Yeah. Yeah. Or have, a, or a certain number will go to a certain seat, um, they call excuse it. Excuse me, but select board, you're muted and, and we can't hear you. Oh, you should be able to hear us through that. We through that. Thank you, Mary Lynn, but we just talked to Cindy. We haven't done anything. She can't hear you. Uh, Can you hear this, Mary Lynn? Yeah, now. Yep. But you've been muted since you started the... Well, so. my, my computer is muted, but there's a microphone here in the middle of us. Well, since, since you started talking about the telephone thing, and when you got to the 
eleventh line that could be used by IT, it went mute. Oh, oh that's interesting. Maybe when it dinged and said it's recording. Oh, that might be when it dinged. Yeah, I'm sorry. That was unintentional. So you can hear us now, though. Yes. Um, okay, so I guess just to summarize, the summary the summary is that our IT contractor is working with Consolidated to coordinate yeah. the service, and it's it's good. It's it's basically good news. Yeah. Um, and it's not finished. It's ongoing. Um, okay, so town hall, or I'm sorry, does anybody have any questions on phones? Okay. Um, town hall reopening. Um, Tim and I spoke today, and Tim, and Tim, please feel free to jump in. Um, we think we can open, unlock the front door. The current conditions are that the public can come to town hall without an appointment, but they ring the bell. Now the bell has disappeared from the front, <laughs> from the wall. So <laughs> it's a good time to um, uh, end this process. So the door, the front door would be unlocked. The door to the library will be locked until the library has sufficient staff to be open. But residents can freely, will be able effective Monday, um, enter town hall to access the clerk and the listers. The treasurer prefers to still do business out of the back door at her office, um, which seems to be working well. Um, in some ways it's more convenient for folks. Um, and she's going to extend the hours, but I don't know to what extent. Um, Tim, did you want to add anything? No, I, I, I think you got it. I mean, I told people to ring the doorbell and son of a gun, the doorbell disappeared so they can't ring it. <laughs> right. And so, so it'll be effective Monday, right? That's correct. Okay. Um, I wanted to let you know that Wyndham Regional Commission is doing a study of bicycle traffic you know periodically they they do traffic analysis traffic counts they're going to look at bicycle traffic at tyler hill and 142. Um, so that could help um, us in future planning it would help us in future planning for bicycle paths just a heads up if you wonder what's happening um, and then the other item on my list is has to do with the sheriff's contract uh, the contract is a, on the fiscal year they have some hours left over um, and what they typically do when that happens is they roll them over into the new fiscal year so that it, they can be used um, and the town wouldn't be charged overtime if there are hours in addition so I talked to Cindy about it she's not here anymore um, and she said those are normally um, rolled over. So that's normally an administrative function and doesn't need to come to the board. So I wasn't sure, but if you're comfortable with leaving it as sure. it is. Um, okay, so that's the town hall update. And then the website update, um, we have the pay option working. So pretty psyched about that. So I don't know if you guys have used it, Seth. I haven't yet, but I have started to direct people to it. Good. So there's a button on, I would like to show the website, but I'm afraid I would mess this up, so I'm not going to do it. <laughs> but our website is vernonvt.org, and um, if you're listening, please check it out. There's a button for paying online on the home page and then also on the treasurer's page. And there are various things you can do. You can buy a dog license, you can get a cemetery plot, you can sign up for recreation programs. Um, and when you do, you pay by credit card. The way the uh, process works is that the fees that are charged by the various folks who get a cut along the way, those are all paid by the customer and you know what the fees are before you pay it. So you can choose whether you want to pay online or not. It's, it's a choice. But the rest of the town does not subsidize that. 
which is it's just really important that that it work that way. Um, the department head gets a, a copy of the receipt. Cindy gets a copy of the receipt, and the town administrator gets a copy of the receipt. So there's we should have enough notification of who's paid what, and then it's deposited within some in some instances within seconds of the person doing it. So it's a really efficient way. Um, it'll help people, you know, pay pay their bills. Um, we're not going to have taxes paid online yet. Cindy wants to make sure that the system is working well and that she's used to it before we get to taxes because taxes, it gets really complicated The because um, they have to um, uh, associate... You need to unmute yourself, I'm sorry. Oh, to unmute myself? This okay. just apparently okay. stopped working over here. All right, so we're using this now, right? Are we good? Okay, so... Um, the challenge with the payment tax payments is that you have to allocate them to a particular account or parcel. So that there's a lot of room for error in that. So um, we're not going to do that until after the next pa tax payment cycle and after Cindy gets used to what is we're already doing is, is new. So that's good news. It's exciting. Um, so I think that is all I have. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The Humane Society co contract is up for renewal. And Andy has corrected the dates that oh, were okay. incorrect. Good. <laughs> I noticed that. Is your microphone on? Yeah. I think so. It says it. Are you hearing us out there? That's uh, no response. Mary Lynn, can you hear us? Are we good? Okay. All right, right now, can I ask a question on the payment options? Because I didn't hear all of it. Sure, and sorry. Sure. You did not include delinquent taxes in that, correct? Correct. Okay, okay. thank you. Right. right, we're we're not doing the complicated, the more complicated ones intentionally because it it as you know, we need to make sure that the payment is associated with either a parcel or a bill and there's too okay. much variability and too much room for error um, right. in the okay. tax payments and the delinquent. I should have mentioned the delinquent tax payments. Yep. I mean the recreation okay. stuff is complicated enough. Yeah. Um, <laughs> We're pretty happy to have okay. that though. It's something that's been long long been requested. So and then the more we do it I think the more we'll fine tune the process and maybe we can get people to use it more and right. it'll, it'll work out well. Right, but just going in steps will be good yep. so we don't crash and burn. Yep, yep, I agree. Okay. Yeah. I, I already have people holler at me because their payment they paid late, so I, I don't wanna get mixed up because they paid with a credit card, so Okay. Good. All right. Thank you. You're welcome, and thank you. All right. So back to the Humane Society. Okay. I'll let you take a motion on the contract. Uh, I move that we renew the uh, contract with the Wyndham County Humane Society. Um, with, the correction. with the correction of the date from 7-1-2021 through 6-30-2022. Is there a second? Second. Any more discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Jean? Aye. Jeff? Aye. Sandy? Aye. Okay. Approval of expenditure to repair well and recreation facility. Seth, you are up. I'm not. Yes. Lucky me. <laughs> you uh, said to keep it simple. Uh, I do. <laughs> I like it. It's my favorite shirt. Um, yeah, I was uh, just requesting the use of the emergency repairs fund to uh, to pay the two bills associated with the, the well work, um, both to line well drilling and Bill Gilbert plumbing and heating, uh, totaling just under two dollars under I think it is fifty five hundred dollars between the two of them, um, and both companies deserve a big thank you for bailing us out for being there like on the spot when they both had other things happening. Mm -hmm. So I, I certainly appreciate their efforts. Um, it was at a time when we were, you know, working on the pool and getting everything up and running, and we had a tight window to get it done. And so, without them, it wouldn't have happened. So, 
So what exactly was the work performed? Um, the we lost pressure on the in the well, um, which we used to fill everything and, 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 and supply water to the bathhouse. So we lost pressure in the well. Um, the drop pipe had corroded out uh, of, of the well. Um, certainly something that routine maintenance is, is, you know, you're not pulling your well to take a look at that. When it goes, it goes. That's just how it works. Um, the, the, the pump itself, um, it was it was their recommendation at that time. Well, it, it was physically pumping. It was at the end of its expected life, and that would have been the time to, to replace it. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to pull it twice. Yeah. So it's, yeah, my understanding that um, there'd be about 20000 in that account minus the, the mini splits that are potentially coming from that. There, I, I talked to Cindy about yeah. this, and there are, there's 10000 in last year's account, which is where this expense would be paid, and then there's 10000 in this year's, current year that just started in July, account, and that's where the mini splits would be paid. Okay. I'll entertain a motion. I move that we authorize payment of the recreation area repairs totaling $5,498.95 um, from the emergency capital. Second. Any more discussion? I think it's the emergency repair Repairs. fund. Repairs and replacement fund or something along those lines. Uh, yeah, emergency repair replacement fund. Okay. Okay. All those in favor? Did you second that, Jeff? I did. Right. All those in favor? Jean? Aye. Jeff? Aye. Yes. Fantastic. Okay. I will submit those bills in the morning. Thank you very much, Seth. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Doing down there. Appreciate it. The kids do. We do need to go into executive session. No. Uh, what? Just read number two. The, um, appointment, employment, and evaluation of public officer. I move that we enter into executive session for the appointment or employment or evaluation of a public officer or employee, 1 VSA 313 3A3. Is there a second? Second. And can we amend that to include the oh. county administrator? Yeah, let's do that. Thank you. Wendy Harrison. Okay, is that friendly? Yes. Okay. Jane? Aye. Jeff? Aye. Okay, we are going into executive session, folks. Thank you for coming. Yeah. We went into executive session at 7.30, came out at 8.10. No action was taken. Um, our upcoming, our next regular meeting will be Tuesday, July 20th at 6.30 p.m. Entertain motion to adjourn. So moved. Sorry. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. <laughs>